Hey everybody, are you ready for some fresh D&D uh, &D drama? Um, so, let's see, this was a couple days ago, a few days ago. Um, we have um, uh, an actual statement, you know, about the OGL from this guy, uh, Kyle Brink. And, um, you know, up until now, like some of these statements that we've been getting, like it, it all felt like gaslighting and, you know, a bunch of lies and stuff. And it seems like maybe this guy was uh, possibly like thrown under the bus a little bit, sort of like meant to take some of the heat. And apparently everybody likes him, but he's he's like, you know, new um, Kyle Brink. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll get into that. So um, he says, D&D has been a huge part of my life long before I worked at Wizards and, and will be for a long time after I'm done. My mission and that of the entire D&D team is to bring help, help bring everyone the creative joy and lifelong friendships that D&D has given us. So, you know, again, like this totally feels like um, a different, you know, a different person. Like we have a face or we, we have a, a name to put with the face and everything. Um, and I, I previously did a video where I talked about how they were backing down on all fronts, like everything that was making people so angry. Um, and I said, you know, short of an apology and and them saying that they're just going to leave the OGL alone. I don't think that people are going to be satisfied. And that's the information that we were getting from insiders was that um, they're going to shove this thing through no matter what. It doesn't matter how much we complain. It doesn't matter how much, you know, if we go over to d, &D Beyond and cancel your subscriptions, you know, or like it doesn't matter how loud we are. They're going to shove it through no matter what. Um, and then that, that decision is coming down from, from the top. Right. And that, that all makes sense. Um, but this is where we get our apology. Um, you know, he actually says, first off, you know, let me start with an apology. We're sorry. We got it wrong. Um, it means something to me. <laughs> They're still ramming it through, but, um, there's a lot of provisions in here. Um, so like, uh, First off, um, they said that they were going to release the um, the SR the the new not SRD the the new OGL one point one point two uh, Friday today. They actually released it yesterday, and um, well, we'll we'll share the um, yeah after you review the um, the proposed OGL, you will be able to fill out a quick survey much like the Unearthed Arcana play test feedback surveys. they will ask you specific questions about the document and include open form fields to share any other feedback that you have. Um, the survey will remain open for at least two weeks and we'll give you advance notice before it closes so that everyone who wants to participate can complete the survey. Then we will com compile, analyze, react to, and present what we have heard from you. So that's important because um, they say that they're gonna present it, right? So, you know, let us see the numbers. We want to see what people said. If you ask us to fill out a survey, um, be, because it's important for a couple of reasons, right? Um, so go back to d, &D Shorts. Um, he has been in contact with like insiders, you know, from the beginning, people working at Wizards who are not happy with all the stuff that's going on and, um, you know, he asked them about the um, about the, the surveys and basically they said that this, you know, and like we have we have good information or, or you know, um, Will says, you know, he has he has good information that uh, that his sources are good. And then we're, we're getting conflicting information from some of these people are saying that um, basically the surveys are a smokescreen. It's, it's a place to funnel people's energy so that they aren't out on like public forums, you know, like screaming, like, <laughs> we're not going to take it or whatever. Um, but uh, so if you, you know, if you're, if you're telling people to fill out this survey, 
is it a smoke screen? Are you just funneling people into this survey so that they have like a place where they think that their voice is being heard because they're saying, um, you know, if you go to D and D beyond and you, you fill out, or you, you cancel your subscription and then you fill out the, um, the exit interview, you know, it says, why are you leaving? And you say, because of, you know, um, open gaming, hashtag open gaming, or, you know, we're leaving because of what you did, um, that they don't read that and that nobody reads that. And, um, and it's just, you know, it's, it's one of those, it's a smoke train. It's like, it's designed to just kind of put your anger in a place where other people can't see it. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, like, we'll see, we'll see if, um, uh, they actually publish the results of this survey, right? And then, you know, we get a lot of like nothing burger where um, they they talk about things that won't be affected by the OGL. And none of this was ever in, in question. You know, the open the open gaming license and the SRD um, is a system reference document. I've been calling it the standard rules document for for forever. I've been getting that wrong. It's the system reference document. Um so they're talking about video content, um, you know, if you're a streamer, podcaster, YouTuber, Twitch, TikTok, it's all covered by the Wizards ban content policy. So that was never in, in question, you know, like um, no changes to the, to the OGL will affect your minis, novels, apparel, dice. And I think that this is just this, a lot of this stuff is just meant to appease the um, the community, you know, because there's all kinds of people that are doing all kinds of things related to D and D. Right. Um, so let's see. Yeah. Non-published works. Like if you're a paid DM or, um, et cetera, et cetera, virtual tabletops. So this does actually, um, cause like virtual tabletops will use the, the SRD and then they'll use the, you know, the, the open gaming license because say that you want to play Pathfinder. You know, or I mean, not Pathfinder is a bad example, but um, Mutants and Masterminds. Say that you want to play Mutants and Masterminds on Roll Twenty, you know, or um, Foundry or or wherever. Like this is going to affect that because um, you know the the virtual tabletops like in the original draft, in the original, we're, they keep calling it a draft and it's not a draft. You know, it's like if you send out contracts with lawyers and it's not a draft. It's a legally binding document. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, again, like there's there's a lot of stuff that they put in here that like your ownership of your content, you will continue to own your content with no license back requirements. So that's that's huge because, you know, they're admitting that the license back thing was in there and supposedly it was there to protect them from people fraudulently saying that they were copying their content. Um, I'm not buying any of that. I just think that the they just got caught with their hand in the cookie jar and, and they're, you know, they're, they're gas, gaslighting, but it's like the gaslighting is getting better and better. And it seems like, especially since this guy, like Kyle Brink is taking over. Um, uh, and it, it does feel like a different person. Like, it seems like we were originally hearing stuff like the original um, response might've even been from this, like, wizard CEO who I don't do not have a very high opinion of. Um, so, but, um, so yesterday, you know, we got the, um, an update on the, uh, the OGL, uh, play test, right? So, um, this is, this is, this is, you know, this is a big thing. Okay. So first off the, um, the, the core, D and D mechanics are going to be distributed to the community through a Creative Commons license. So, um, a Creative Commons license is that is basically like you're allowed to use it. Um, sometimes you know, like there are there are different ways that you can use a Creative Commons license. Like, um, for instance. Um, you can have a Creative Commons license where you can't use the the products of the the license in a in a commercial way, right? 
you could have a creative like a creative commons license where like say that you make a piece of music or something and you say um you can use that piece of music in your creative works you just need to give me credit for it but you can't use it in a in a commercial product right so you know that's that is a is a concern like in a way because um the uh, um the D D core mechanics are covered under the system reference document um so just you know just to kind of th this is you know this is more important to me because it has to do with like game design um so just just so you know like the one of the things that's the foundation of, of all this um so the first srd was published in 2000 by wizards of the coast based on um the third edition of dungeons and dragons right um and then that's where you know pathfinder came from mutants and masterminds and then a bunch of other games like D uh d20 modern which i think was actually was wizards um there are it, it was uh there was a bunch of you know there was there was more there was a lot more games that were just based on like the the d20 system but you know we've got like 13th age and conan and all the you know all kinds of other games that are that use like 3.5 rules in some way um some of these you know some of these I've, I've never i've never even heard of i was i went to the game store the other day and i was trying to like find some of these older games to just look at them and a lot of them seem very much like um they're they're they play very much like D, &D 3.5 basically so um uh you know it's, it's important because it's not just it's not an srd um, I don't know why they're not just, you know, why they, why they don't just have, have an SRD because, um, legally it's like, if you wanted to make your own Monopoly game, like we, we, I've talked about this before, but, um, I, uh, I hit up Kevin Crawford over at Cine Nomine Publishing and, um, he kind of laid it out. Um, you know, he said that like, mechanically for the for legal purposes you could make a one-to-one -one copy of his game provided that you use your own wording text setting um and then you could also you could make compatible products for his game without ever asking for his permission you know if you're just using the core game mechanics and you aren't like ripping out whole stat blocks and then like you know like settings and and all that you know ip stuff then you can make content that's compatible without his permission there's not really anything that you can do about it um so you know that's that's one thing but um what they are saying is that you you can use things like owl bears you know or mind flayers and stuff like that that is a part of the D, &D universe specifically you know, in your games, in your, in your content, and that you don't have to, there's no license back, there's no royalties, you don't have to go over and register with them because you're making free one shots on the DM guild, DM guild, right? So there's a really long winded explanation, but I, I did want to kind of go into this, you know, and, and like, just explain some of this stuff, right? So, you know, you can use owl bears, you can use magic missile, um, you can, you know, it's all, it's all going to be, um, provided to you, you'd like to use in your, in your game, your setting, you know, and all that without having a license back without, you know, having to worry about them coming after you. And it's perpetual. It's an irrevocable license, right? So this, you know, basically all they had to do was just say, we're sorry. We're, you know, we're, we've, we've changed our mind. We're leaving the S we're leaving the SRD alone. We're leaving the OGL alone and just backed off and everybody would have been happy. You know, everybody would have gone back and then, you know, I mean, not, not everybody, but I think for a lot of people, the damage is done, you know, 
but a lot of people were just gone back to D&D Beyond, you know, like put, bought their subscription again and, and, you know, everything would have been good. But they're, they're, they are ramming through the new OGL, no matter what. Um, but they're giving, a, you know, they're giving everybody a way to use that content royalty and copyright through it free through a creative commons license which is it is a win you know um and it's irrevocable and perpetual so you know that 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 is that's that's big that's that's huge right um and you know like this guy kyle brink i'm actually kind of gaming gaining a lot of respect for him he's definitely doing a much much better job than whoever was putting out these press releases before and managing some of this uh, backlash. So um, Creative Commons is a nonprofit de dedicated to sharing knowledge and it develops a set of licenses to let creators do that. Creative Commons license we picked lets us give everyone um, those core mechanics forever. Because we don't control the license, releasing the D&D core rules under the Creative Commons will be a decision we can never change. So it just becomes part of the public domain. Anybody can use it, but it, it um, you know, like I said, there's there's different ways that um, like they could release it under a Creative Commons license where nobody can use it for any commercial products that you can't use it for anything that makes money or, you know, there's there's sort of ways to finagle and like getting get around things. Right. Um, so the OGO 1.2 and the important ways that it's different from the 1.0 a. First, it allows us to address hateful content. So this is where like the gaslighting comes in. And, um, <laughs> you know, as far as like the, the, the hate content, I don't think that it ever existed. I don't think that it was ever a big concern. It's like if, if this hate, hate content, you know, like if it exists, where is it? Um, it's not like people were putting out their own version of D&D &D where they were running like a, a concentration camp you know or something like that like it doesn't exist right i'm, I'm not i don't want to get into it too much because you know for obvious reasons but it's like it just it just isn't out there um and then you know as far as like the nfts like the apparently the only people who were making who were threatening to make D, &D nfts was hasbro uh so, you know, I'm not buying any of this stuff like of the like the number one concern being that they wanted to address hateful content. And also the 1.0 OGL had a um, a a clause in it that they could revoke the license, you know, um, by it was it, it may have been slightly more difficult. I'm not sure. Like, I don't really you know, I'm not a lawyer. I don't pretend to be. But I do know a little bit about this stuff. Um, but you know, they, like there was, there was a clot. There was a portion of the original OGL 1.0 that would have covered hate content. You know, um, and then so they they are saying just it's in, it's in here somewhere. But basically, like they and they alone decide what hate content is, and there's no guidelines. It doesn't say you know, like what, what will be considered hate, what won't be considered hate. So it's very murky, you know, like they could just say anything is hate and not give you a reason why. Um, so what's not in there, there's no royalty payment, you know, and originally the top tier was 25%. And then if you're like, you still had to register if you were making free stuff, you know, and like any kind of content, um, uh, and then I think, I don't know what, what it was for like lower tiers of how much they were going to charge, but you know, 25% is huge. Um, so there's no royalty payments, no financial reporting, no license back. Also huge, no license back. Um, cause I'm not, there's no way in hell that I would sign a, a license back document with, with my own stuff, you know, and publish, pu give some publisher the rights to my intellectual property and would publish without my permission. Um, no registration, you know, also a huge, no distinction between commercial and non-commercial. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see about that. We'll see how that, how that pans out. Um, nothing will impact any content you have already published on the OGL 1.0a. So, you know, like, 
that that was another thing was that the revoking the 1.0a and saying that it's totally invalid there's legal questions about whether they can even do that because you can't just rug pull people you know that have been publishing stuff for 20 years and then say you owe us money any for anything that you've you know that is still making money going forward published you know after we made this agreement to you like we had a contract and then just rug pull them like if there was a class action lawsuit, I think that that would have been like at the core of it. You know, luckily they've walked that back for everybody. I mean, it's a good thing. Um, so your stuff is your stuff. You know, that's, this is, this is all important. Like they are, they're, they're walking back the important things. Um, and then like, there's a lot less gaslighting in this stuff. Um, Protecting D&D's inclusive play experience, as I said above, content more clearly associated with D&D, like um, classes, spells, monsters, what falls under the LGL 1.2. So, yeah, I mean, the the OGL, it's, it's designed, it's like, it seems like this guy, for, for one thing, he understands the concept of, like, rising tides lift all boats, you know, and, like, the community making fan content and like everybody loving this game and being a part of it is a good thing you know and like you don't need to be so overly litigious and go after everybody and you know it it seems like he understands that uh, a lot more than these ceos uh, who want to ram microtransactions into D D. um so, you know, like, again, like, we see this stuff about the hurtful hate hate content, inclusive safe play, like, this, this all, a lot of this stuff seems like a big nothing burger where they're trying to just appease people, and, you know, there is some gaslighting where it's like, oh, that never happened, and if it did happen, it wasn't that bad, and if it did, and if, and if that, you know, and if it was that bad, then it wasn't my fault, and, um, you know, we have to do this, and just, like, like gaslighting at like every level um uh ttrpgs and virtual tabletops ogl 1.2 will only apply to um ttrpg content whether published as books electronic publications or virtual tabletops so what about video games what about like celeste crown of the magister or you know there's 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 lots of video games out there that um that actually use the OGL 1.0. Um, Deauthorizing the OGL 1.0a, we know this is a big concern. The Creative Commons license and the terms, open terms of the 1.2 are intended to help with that. One key reason why we have to deauthorize, we can't use the protective options in 1.2 if someone can just choose to publish harmful, discriminatory, or illegal content. Or, so like, that's, that's just not true. This is more gaslighting. Um, first off, there are, you know, there are legal protections, like there are protections in the, um, the 1.0 that, you know, if somebody is publishing like hate content, which I am not convinced ever existed. I, if anybody can find any example of this so-called hate content, I would love to see it because I'm, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't exist. And it never has. And it's never been a concern. It's always been about the money. It's always been about the money. 100%. Um, and, you know, again, any content you've already published under 1.0a will still be licensed under the OGL 1.0a. So, I mean, you're revoking it, but you're saying that you're not going to go after people, you know, like, okay. Um, very limited license changes allowed. Only two sections can be changed once OGL 1.2 is live. How you cite wizards in your work and how we can contact each other. We don't know what the future holds or what other technologies we'll, we will use to communicate with each other. So we thought these two sections need to be future proofs. So it, 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 a lot of this seems like a compromise, you know, where it's like we're furious, they're ramming it through. Um, so this is how it's going to happen. Um, so virtual tabletop policy continues to support virtual tabletop usage for both OGL creators and VTT operators. 
So I'm sure that they already have agreements, you know, with like Roll20 and Foundry or, or whatever, you know, to like sell books and stuff. Because, you know, it's like you can you can buy books through Roll20 or, um, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like the, um, you know, I'm sure that there, there, there has to be some, some kind of commercial license that they have. So I don't think that they want to mess with that too much. You know, they don't want to just say, oh, you can't play D and D on, on Roll20 anymore. You have to play through our service that makes it look like a video game with microtransactions. Um, so ownership disputes, you own your content period. Um, you don't give wizards any license back and for any ownership disputes, you can sue for breach of contract and money damages versus holding up products. Other players are waiting for while we sort it out. So no hateful content or conduct, you know, again, they just keep, they keep shoving this in there. It's like, it was never an issue. It's, it's a smoke screen. Um, Creator badge, product badge, you will have the option to include a badge on your OGL works. Once we get feedback for the badge, we'll create a guide on how you can use it and display it. Like say that you wanted to say 5e compatible, you know, like there might be like a specific like badge. And I think that they are smart to do this because it's like, um, you know, I thought they were smart to just have this OGL in place to begin with because you have all these other publishers who are creating stuff that is um, usable in their game. I understand that they're not making money from it, but it's like, it's just making a, a much bigger community. Like there's all these people that are playing your game that are still buying your products. They're just buying other people's products too, you know. Um, so overall, what we're going for here is giving good faith to creators um, the same level of freedom or greater for things in Creative Commons to create creative uh, uh, TTRPG content that's been great for everyone, yes, um, while giving us the tools to ensure the game continues to become ever and more inclusive and welcoming. So I'm, I'm, I'm not buying any of this smokescreen stuff, but you know, this is a, this is a good compromise so far um it's for me you know like the damage is done and it's like um oh, what is the, um there's a there's a there's a, somebody put it really well um and said it you know it's like if somebody points a gun at you and then and then try to shoot you and then it jams and and then you know they say they start like trying to clear the jam and they're like, and, and like reloading and they're like, we're really sorry. You know, like this wasn't supposed to happen. And the, you know, it's not our fault. And, and it wasn't really, you know, the gun's not really loaded. Then you don't, you don't trust them, you know, like in the future, like the damage is done. Uh, you don't like put your trust back in them. Um, so, you know, like we're very interested to read your thoughts, our team, does a great job compiling any and all playtest feedback data for us in a comprehensible way to reflect on and act on. So I'm confident they'll do the same here. You know, like we'll see. If you if you publish if you publish the results, you know, um, then and it's not just a smokescreen, uh, then you know we'll see. Um, it, it seems like it, going after the pocketbook, you know like, like hitting them hard in the wallet was the only thing that they listened to. And, um, y y like losing hundreds of thousands of D and D beyond subscribers, which equals, you know, like $5 a month or, or more, um, that that's, that's what they, what they listened to. And, you know, if it was just a bunch of YouTubers, like screaming at their webcams, I don't think that they, they would have listened at all. And the, you know, the, the only reason why we knew to do that from the beginning was because of these, you know, these insiders who, who like sort of had their finger on the pulse of what was going on. And some of them were saying that they don't listen to the surveys at all. They don't care. You know, it's just smokescreen. 
Um, and then, uh, you know, and some people saying like, oh, we never had, like, we have never had access to that data. Um, <clears throat> uh, if you, you know, uh, if you say, like, if you say to them, hey, can we have some of those like exit interviews, then they don't get them. Like the, the, so we'll see if like this, this survey actually gets published, if the data actually gets published, but the, the, this new OGL is getting ran through. And I think that they are going to have their lawyers, you know, make it airtight so that I did the, uh, we'll see. Um, you know, again, like I'm not a lawyer and I don't know that much about this stuff, but, but this is my opinion. Um, I feel like these, you know, this, this new CEO came in, she said, D and D is under monetized. We need to be going after the players more, you know, like the GMs are the whales. We're making all the money off of them. They're the ones buying all these books and stuff. We need to introduce recurring like spending mechanics like we have in video games, like microtransactions and subscriptions. And um, we have, you know, information that they were, they want to have like a top tier of D&D Beyond where it's $30 a month, which is like, it's crazy. I mean, like for me, like Netflix and, you know, Hulu and like the, that's like what I spend on TV, you know, for, for a month. Like, I'm not just going to spend that on just on having my, my characters on your website and stuff like that. So I don't know, like, that's my opinion that, that we're getting a compromise and this idiot CEO just is being a stubborn jackass. And they, you know, they, they had to put their little dig in there. Like, like you didn't win. We all won. You know, and 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 then this guy, the this um, uh, this uh, producer, you know, the this executive producer, uh, Kyle Brink, he's like doing damage control. So you know, like all they had to do was just back off. All they had to do was say, you know, we're sorry, we hear you. We're gonna leave the OGO alone. That's literally all they had to do. Everybody would have been happy, but they they're ramming it through. And we'll see, we'll see the, the, the kind of permanent changes this, this, this has. So hopefully this puts this to bed and hopefully this is a good compromise. And I'm frankly happy that I got my apology. <laughs> so, so anyways, um, yeah, have a good one, have a better one, and I will see you in the next one.